when you first form, uh, formed the jet war, after the blade, did you have any expectation it will last over uh, 50 years? Well, when I was a teenager, I, I listened to the music played by old men. I didn't listen to pop music of the day. I listened to jazz and blues and classical music and folk music played by people who were older than my father. And so my whole experience of learning to play music was that the music I loved was played by old guys. And so I thought that's pretty normal that I might grow up to be one of them and continue to play music. So... With a little luck along the way, here I am doing the sort of thing that, that I dreamed about when I listened to old guys playing back in uh, 1966, 1967. Oh, wow. uh, how did the name uh, Jet Rotali uh, first came out? It's a name given to us by uh, uh, a booker in the agency office back in January of 1968 who suggested the name Jethro Tull because we'd had three or four names in the previous yeah. few weeks and we couldn't really settle on a name and he came up with the name Jethro Tull and we said, yes, okay. And um, he was a, a history scholar at university and I wasn't. So I didn't know that he'd named us after a dead guy who invented the seed drill in the 18th century. And I didn't find that out until a couple of weeks later, by which time we had received our first positive responses from the music press in England. And it was a little bit too late to change, because that would have been a very bad career move, just as we were getting known to change our name again. So we stuck with the name, and it's a bit of embarrassment to me over the years, but, you know, it's, um, it's part of history now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you get the, the courage or the idea to play flute on, in blues and rock band? It wasn't so obvious back then. Well, I was a guitar player when I was a teenager, and when I was about uh, 19 years old, I decided, having heard Eric Clapton playing with John Mayles Blues Breakers, I decided that I was not going to be as good as he was. And so maybe I should look around for something else to play. And um, I traded in my guitar in the summer of 1967 and uh, for no good reason picked a, a flute and a Shure Unidyne 3 microphone. And so uh, I parted with my 1960s Fender Stratocaster, probably worth about $50,000, $60,000 today. I parted company with it in exchange for a Um, uh, a $50 flute and a $50 microphone and um, so it doesn't seem like a good investment but in fact it was a, a very good financial move and um, I didn't learn didn't get a note out of the flute until December of 67 and by January of 68 I was I was a professional flute player which uh, Jethro's album do you love the most I know all, all of them is your son But, uh... Yeah, it's, um, well, you know, you have to have a, a fondness for certain albums that are maybe, maybe those that have marked some change in, in career. So I suppose our second album, Stand Up, in 1969, was the album that first gave me the opportunity to write my own music and do something different other than playing the blues. And then maybe the Aqualung album in 1971, where I felt more confident as a singer-songwriter to include more varied and acoustic songs. And Thick as a Brick in 72, where progressive rock suddenly became uh, part of what we were known for. And Songs from the Word in 1977, where elements of folk music uh, became part of the, the musical style. So, you know, I can, I can go on, but, um, you know, for most people, they would say Aqualung was the, the album that brought Jethro Tull to the world, the international stage. And so I guess most people will think of Jethro Tull as uh, being connected with that album more than any single other one. And, you know, we always play a couple of songs from Aqualung, you know, show, and a Jethro Tull concert wouldn't be a Jethro Tull concert without here in Locomotive Breath and Aquila. Yeah. Uh, how many musical instruments uh, do you play? 
Well, the only one that I play reasonably well is the flute. I, I uh, play guitar, of course, to write songs, and I play guitar and a few pieces on stage. A- acoustic guitar, that is, of course. I'm not really interested in electric guitar, but um, acoustic guitar and flute are the main things, but I play other instruments that I, I can use in songs, I usually use them to write songs with, and sometimes to decorate songs. So, over the years, I play the the mandolin family of instruments: mandolin, mandola, bazookis, those kind of things. And I play, um, uh, I obviously play drums, and I play bass, um, some keyboards, some Jeff Tan albums. But um, I've even I think I'm thick as a brick. You even hear me playing a line of trumpet and another line where I'm playing the violin. But uh, if you put a violin in my hands, you would have to leave the room very quickly. Um, If you were talking about the big picture, then, you know, music has been influenced in my life and times by huge changes in society. And we, we were fortunate, I suppose, from a career perspective to begin in that era when so many things changed, you know, the, the, the reach of media, of international, um, the growth of, uh, of the economies, the, the increase in, uh, in global spending, the emancipation, if you like, of uh, freedoms given to minority groups, and of course, most importantly, I think, uh, relatively equal rights for women in many countries of the world. So, you know, we, we were part of huge changes in society. I think during the uh, the 60s into the 70s, you know, there were 10 years of remarkable changes. There were, of course, other bad things that happened. The, the Cold War, the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the Vietnam War. I mean, these were things that clouded the horizon, but they all became part of what people like me could be moved by and write our music to reflect those changes but some people think that rock music changed the world i have to remind them that the world changed rock music as well mm-hmm. it was a symbiotic relationship with uh, with the development of of rock music and things that were happening around the world yeah i mean you know i think you're concentrating on what you're doing is just trying to uh, focus on the words you're singing on the the music the musical notes you're playing i don't i don't think i have time to feel excited i just get on with with that incredible concentration that i have to have and it, it begins 10 seconds before i walk on stage so i don't feel nervous i don't really feel excited i have to really focus on what i have to do next and that lasts for the next, um, you know, hour and 50 minutes or whatever it is. And, and uh, I don't really have time to be thinking, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, I feel good. I'm I'm really constant. It's a bit like asking a a racing driver, you know, are you excited when, <laughs> you know, you're, you're just thinking about, Who's behind you? Who's in front of you? And what 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 the next uh, the next corner is going to be like? It's um you know you you don't really have time to consider the emotions. You you're really so intensely focused on what you do. But that's in its own way is exhilarating. And I suppose when you when you finish a concert, then you you know as you walk off stage that the next the next thing in your life really apart from some very wet and sweaty clothes, the next important thing in your life is a is a glass of cold beer. And that, that really feels good. Uh, is there gonna be a then then, then, then I, I, I am excited as I walk to my dressing room. <laughs> I will admit that. Uh, is there going to be a new album soon? No, there's going to be a new album when I get round to finishing it, which I began um, in March of last year. And... In uh, December, January, February of this year, I will have time to be able to get back to that and hopefully complete it for a, a release in September of 2019. What's the secret to survive the music business? Well, mostly it's luck, but if you have if you have a, a sense of um, uh, energy and enthusiasm and and also, I think if you get bored easily, then that drives you to try new things and continue to try to develop as a musician. So, you you know, part of it comes from your own internal strength and commitment. Part of it comes from 
outside and of course at the end of it all if if the uh if the audience if the record buyers and audiences don't like what you're doing then you have to um you have to change your your uh, y- your way of doing things or learn to play golf and go fishing it's over <laughs> i've been many times to israel uh, performing, of course, and um, uh, we were there last couple of years ago, and and probably two years before that. So I, I'm I'm a regular visitor to Israel, and uh, I have a number of charities in Israel that I support, and happily, um, in fact, some of my young um, m- m- musical contacts will be appearing in uh, some Israel in 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 the concerts that we play we have a, a local young string quartet from uh, from the polyphony school in Nazareth who will be coming to join us on stage and so you know it's nice to have some interaction with local musicians too well um you could probably you could probably coax a few items on the menu out of me but that's about it no i'm not a, i don't I don't speak Hebrew, and of course, um, I don't speak Arabic either. I don't speak Russian. I don't speak uh, German. Um, sometimes I find it quite difficult to speak American. So um, these days, I'm afraid we are very lazy in in Britain. We get used to the fact that the the English language is the lingua franca of the whole world, and um, in the uh, in the world of arts and entertainment, in science and in industry. You know, I guess you get you, we get an easy ride because most people speak English, and and we are too lazy to learn to uh, to speak other languages. So my schoolboy French and Latin is not really of any any use to me today. Uh, let's go but um, let's yeah. question. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any message to the Israeli people? Yeah, just. Um, Enjoy what you have while you can because it's a scary world we live in and uh, I think we all have to accept that there are there are things on the horizon that could make us a little fearful but one of the things that always makes me you know feel optimistic is when I come to Israel I see in spite of I hear a lot of bad stories from people uh, on different uh, levels of politics and society but I also I also know that people have a great passion and feeling of of uh of strong support for the country and for the fact that it's a place where you can you can enjoy yourself and be happy on the shores of the Mediterranean in clement weather with uh with um relative freedom for all people compared to many other countries in the region then uh Israelis do have quite a lot to feel good about so enjoy it while you can yeah and I thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. I look forward to seeing you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.